Hi everyone, it's Roma Fisher from Spear Live Television. We're in our studio here today where we uh, are going to talk about prayer today and I think you will really, really be blessed. We want to start off with basic information and then we're going to talk about specific prayers. And as the Lord leads, we're going to talk about different prayers that are most meaningful and I'm going to try to give you the information I believe some of you, my friends and partners, are asking about uh, because uh, I usually get um, calls. Sometimes people message me. Sometimes people send me a, a prayer request and, and speak to me. Sometimes I'm, you know, maybe perhaps in the mall or somewhere else. People ask me about prayer. They'll maybe phone, call the office or something, and they always ask for for some kind of prayer and. Um, and so, uh, looking at that over the years, I've been really, um, you know, um, gathering information, learning about prayer myself. You know, early in the um, 19, uh, 1990s, the Lord began to speak to my heart about teaching prayer. And at that time, I really knew very little about prayer. And so, um, I was kind of, uh, I felt pressured or, or to myself about studying. And so um, I just felt a responsibility. Uh, it was kind of a, not only a passion, but, a, but a something that was really laying hard, very difficult and hard on my heart. And um, so I began to study the Bible on, on prayer and um, uh, the Lord, you know, began to minister to me and said to me, you should learn about prayer. And, and so I didn't have any information at that time. I didn't have any books. I didn't have any um, notes and so I began to do a research and I began to study and thank God I learned about researching uh, as a student you know studying in college and in university and so I had some really good habits about taking notes and doing some research and I was able to um, gather a lot of information and begin to study prayer and and uh, during that time I had such an encounter with God God began to speak to my heart and we were having uh, in, in our prayer sessions, we begin to have, you know, the visitation of God. God begin to visit our, 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 our assembly, our church, and our prayer group, and things begin to happen. People start getting excited about prayer, and and um, we learned a great deal together. And I, as I was teaching, I was learning as well, and so and so we begin to, you know, uh, um, begin to record uh, some of the stuff that we were praying about and the scriptures God gave us, and we kind of itemized. Uh, strategically what we're praying about in the city in our own lives in the church the life of the church and we begin to pr pray about uh, the, the needs of the city we begin to pray about our civic leaders this was the early 1990s and we began to record the different kinds of prayers we were praying and the answered prayers and, and how we were praying so we begin to record that and, la and, and not too long ago I, I saw the um, book and, and we itemized who was in the prayer meetings and what we were praying about and, and what kind of reactions was going on and what kind of messages was coming and, and different things like that. And so it, we really made it a study uh, on, on, on this praying because God laid it on my heart and, and it became, be, became a real huge uh, um, you know, effort and it became a huge importance in our lives of, of the church. We prayed about the city uh, of Thunder Bay and, and what was going on during that time. We'd get up early in the morning, you know, um, uh, of course, some of us had to get up at six or, or five, and we made our way. We had a seven o'clock meeting, and before we all went to work, and a lot of people began to participate in that group. We had anywhere from 15 people, sometimes 25 people, sometimes 30 people, and we would pray a, a, a lot. And, uh, and so we thank God for for the adventure we learned about prayer. We prayed, uh, you know, in our English language. We prayed in the spirit. And it was a great, great adventure. And um, so lately, the Lord began to lay in my heart uh, again, um, next little while ago, that uh, he said to teach people prayer, put it on uh, television, put it recorded, and allow the partners and friends to um, learn about, about prayer. And so we thank God that we can really, really learn together. So this is why we're here today. And we wanna talk about the basics of prayer and how to pray and so let's go and uh, get started and uh, I'll, we'll comment as we go along and I hope you uh, uh, make some comments let me know what you think um, uh, how this has blessed you 
and I want to communicate with you, send your prayer request, and we will, we will, we will pray together. I, I believe that you will learn a lot from this series. And so um, let's go to our, our text of scripture. I've got two texts of scriptures I'm going to use because they're what we call golden text because in these uh, uh, scripture uh, based on prayer, about prayer, you can teach in any direction you, you, you want to. That's why we call them the golden text prayer because you can teach any kind of prayer on it. And so let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. We're talking about introduction to prayer right now. So praying always, Ephesians 6, 18, the King James, praying always with all prayer. Notice the word with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And there's a whole lot of stuff written or, or a whole lot of things in that Ephesians 6, 18. We can't discuss them all right now, but we want to pick uh, just this, this phrase out of it, with all prayer. Praying always, we want to emphasize, with all prayer. Now let's go over to Ephesians 6, 18. Uh, and we're going to read the, in the Amplified Version. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. So the scripture says in the Ephesian, uh, Ephesians 6, 18, the Amplified Classical Edition says, with all manner of prayer. So what am I saying or what is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying, you know, prayer is more than one thing. Prayer is, um, there's more than one kind of praying or more than one kind of prayer. And so we're going to look at the different kinds of prayer that is mentioned in the Bible, particularly the New Testament. And we want to study that and find out how we can pray effectively and learn from the scriptures and apply those principles to our lives and so that we can be people who can, who can pray effectively for ourselves, for our loved ones, uh, for our communities, for our cities, for our nation. And we're going to look at some of the things that you know, if we have time, we'll talk about what will hinder our prayer life and, and what makes our prayer, uh, you know, so strong. So we'll look at some of those as well. But right now we'll talk about the basics of prayer. So what we're saying in Ephesians 6, 18 is saying that there's all kinds of prayers, not just one kind. And most people, uh, when, they, when, we, when they mention prayer, they're, they're, they think about uh, asking God something. Uh, asking for a request or uh, making a prayer request to God. And so we want to give you a definition in, 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 a, in a minute there and talk about what exactly is prayer and give you a definition. And so uh, let me just read this um, version also, uh, Ephesians 6, 18, uh, in the New Century Version. And so I just want to emphasize uh, something here, reemphasize this. It says, Praying in the Spirit at all times um, with all kinds of prayers. So the New Century says praying in the Spirit at all times with all kinds of prayers. So again, we are emphasizing that there's more than one kind of praying. Not just asking God something. Not just making a request to God. So there's all kinds of prayers. And and. Let me just say also this, asking God something, there is a procedure in how we approach God and how we ask God something. So we want to look at that as, as well. We want to look at what we call uh, later on the prayer of faith. We'll look at that more specifically and give you some steps and give you some principles and how to do that and become more effective in asking God, making prayer requests unto God. So um, let's uh, carry on. In our study here, we are talking about uh, prayer and introduction to prayer, and we're going to talk about the basics. Now, I want you to go to John chapter 15, verse 7. This is an, um, my, my second text. We just read you the different versions of, uh, of that particular Ephesians 6, 18 in the King James, uh, the, the um, Amplified Bible uh, Classical Edition, and the New Century Version. And what we emphasize is that there's more than one kind of prayer. Now let's go to John chapter 15, verse 7. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he makes this a statement. 
He said, if you abide in me, John 15, 7, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you can see something here, um, I heard uh, a Bible teacher say that I admire very much said this, you know, um, when he was praying and he was reading the scripture and he said, did you notice in John 15, 7, that there is only one emphasis in me, referring to God, and three emphasis on you, referring to the one who's, who's praying or the one giving prayer. Now let's read this again. If you abide in me, that's Jesus talking to his disciples. If you abide in Jesus, that means uh, those people who are born again, who have come into this new life through Christ, if you abide in me, that's when you are born again. You abide in Jesus, you're living in Christ. You abide in him. That means you're living in him. You're walking with him. You're, you're daily having uh, a continual fellowship with God. And notice it says, and my words abide in you. In other words, the word of God, his living word, the New Testament is, is alive in you. You, you begin to understand the word. You begin to know what the word says. That means you have to be familiar with the word. You have to get to know the word of God. You're going to have to study the word of God. He said, in my words abide in you. Well, how does the word abide in you? Well, you eat the word. You, you, you devour the word by reading it, by beginning to meditate on it, by beginning to study it on a regular basis. Because once you are in Christ, it is needful for you as a believer to begin to feed on the Word of God. Jesus said, you know, he says that man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus is talking about we need to begin to devour the Word of God and begin to make it uh, a priority in our lives every single day like you would eating breakfast or any other food drink every, every day that you get up. It says in here, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You, that's talking about you, you shall ask what you will. Now, it didn't say you shall ask anything you want, but what you will, that is according to his word. And we shouldn't ask something outside of the will of God because we're abiding in his word. When you abide in his word, you're not going to ask something outside of the will of God. So when you ask God something, when you ask God a request or you're questioning something like healing or you, you're questioning something like maybe you need funds for, for doing different projects, if you're, if you're praying for your children, if you're praying for direction, you're going to have to abide in the Word. You're going to have to go to the Word of God and find out what the Word says so and meditate on it and become very familiar with it that you know for sure that it's God's Word, it's God's will, and you, you begin to ask your prayer request based on the will and the Word of God. And so it says, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So we can say something like this. Successful prayer is not based on God, but it's based on you, the person doing the prayer. You have to learn what the will is. You have to understand what the covenant is. Be familiar with it. Have it as a part of your life, like you're, you're, you know, like you're eating. It's a part of your body. It's a part of you. And once you begin to have that word abiding in you, you're going to ask God out of that understanding that's in you, that's living in you, and it'll 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 come to fruit, fruit, fruitation. So, let me read that again. If you abide in me, Jesus said, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So it will be done unto you when you become familiar with the Word of God and getting that Word inside of you in your spirit and your mind, cleaning your mind, getting your mind renewed at the Word of God. You're not going to ask anything outside of the will of God. And so this is effective praying, learning the covenant, learning the Word of God. So we've talked to you, we've shared with you the general golden text, the two general golden texts. We call them golden text because when you use these two verses of scripture, teaching prayer, you can move in any direction you want and, and just you know, generalize about what prayer is all about. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to our introduction to prayer. 
uh, part one. So we're going to have th three parts, I believe, to this introduction. And so thank you so much for tuning in and hang on. We're going to be right back with more introduction to prayer. <laughs>